and like on the on the um what's it called on the thumbnail there was a vtuber i recognized and i was like wait was th is was that matara's past life and i just didn't know so yeah what is a zoo is that a food yeah like here you see this like this vtuber design like i didn't even know they're the same i didn't know i did not know <laughs> i didn't know i did not know chat i did not know see so, in my hag video go. i mentioned that the reason why people like hags is that they are much more chill knows how to put you sure. into conversation they have less bullshit the appeal of the hag is universal for a person looking to get an ara ara mommy experience uh. you will get ah uh. <laughs> Oh, that was so shit. Your fill. The people looking for streams that have an air of comfiness and healing, you will also get your fill. The people looking Thanks to drown the themselves in absolute death. milkers, you will also get your look. I'm not going to pretend that Nina was one of my Oshis. I did like her from the collabs from the 10 or so streams that I watched in her channel. But I will say... Dude, this music in the background is banging! Say that Nina did have that hag aura. She put herself out there, reaching out and turned people into her friends or good acquaintances via one. the power of sheer vibes. Yes. In fact, scrolling down her entire stream catalog, one would realize that her most prominent content forms are all just chatting streams and collabs. To viewers, she was generally comfy. You can let your guard down. It seemed like everyone in EGN did actually let their guard down around her. She just had Aww. that air of motherliness or auntiness. <laughs> She's someone who looks after everybody, and especially for Luxium, she was there um, when we were first added to the Niji Discord, and Nina was the first one who came and spoke to us. Um, Aww. I think that because we- Dude, I need a Madara in my life. I need a Madara in my life, man. I need like an auntie or like a mom to take care of me, man. I need a Madara. <laughs> With the first boys joining EN, there was a level of anxiety from the other girls uh, before we joined, you know. There are boys joining and you know, it felt like it was a female-only space before, and so obviously there's a pretty reasonable level of anxiety. It makes perfect sense, but Nina was the first one who jumped in VC with us, and she's so... She just made sure that we were included, and she Aww. invited us all to collabs, and she came up with so many ideas for how to make us feel included, and uh, I'll always appreciate her for that. She calls herself unofficial mom, but I think she is... Literally official mom, though. The official... Mother. That sounds weird. Why? <laughs> what, what sounds weird about wanting a parental figure? <laughs> of everyone. <laughs> when you never had Indeed. one. And what didn't help was the fact that she didn't know much when it came to one like one bully. Wave three girls. Uh, so gorgeous and funny and sweet. I'm so happy to see our family grow. I'm praying they will not bully me. <laughs> Please spare me, mom. Tech and hardware or even software. Her extroverted personality was out there. It's why her fans love her, and it's why the up-and-coming members adore her. But it's also why people hate her. See, what? like anything in this world, being extroverted has its- <laughs> Why do people just hate on nice things, man? People just hate nice things. Downsides. Although being extroverted allows you to reach out to people, make well, friends, be a social go-getter, a little side effect nice. of that is that sometimes an extroverted person struggles to recognize when they're pushing someone a little too hard or perhaps overstep their boundaries. Perhaps they made remarks or comments that, although they might think is funny banter, to the other party might be offensive or weird. And in the internet, people will always misconstrue things. People will always take the worst interpretation and the worst yep. case scenario. While Nina's yep. community loved her, allowed my- <laughs> What? What? <coughs> Holy glitch! Holy glitch! Worst interpretation and the worst case scenario. While Nina's community loved her, a loud minority of the Niji EN fanbase, despite the boys all just gushing about how awesome and helpful Nina has been behind the scenes, did not. Why, you may ask? Well, there's a little document called the Nina Bitch Catalog. It's a rather intimate write-up from one or many disgruntled Niji EN fans what? who articles and links every single reason as to why they think Nina as the title implies, is a bitch. And look, it's a lot. Oh my god, I can't with people. Bro, I just fucking can't with people. 
do jealousy is kitsu. Yeah, parasocial, man. Parasocial. I don't even know where to begin unpacking this. A lot of the things listed down here, I think, can just be boiled down to her extroverted and banterful personality popping off in ways that could be misconstrued. Perhaps some of them are true and did make talents uncomfortable or offend them. Although, I think a lot of these are just schizo ramblings. And Literally. I think she did know about these sentiments. I don't care what people say about me on the internet. Um, because people have said worse things to me in life. I probably thought worse things about myself. Bro, that's that's literally how I look at things. Bro, that's literally how I look at my haters, man. Like, literally. Like, those haters can't say anything that wasn't already said to me before. <laughs> like, literally. Right? For anybody who is, you know, sitting back and disliking me right now, girl, get ready. <laughs> you don't even know me yet. I've barely <laughs> been streaming. I've barely been doing anything. I haven't been doing collabs. If you're hating me now, oh, just wait till I'm a butterfly again. You're gonna really hate me then. <laughs> Dude, I hate how fucking stuff Niji models are. I hate how stuff the Niji Sanji models are. Bro. The whole life you used to have really, really, really stuff models too. They, they're somewhat better now, but bro, why is this so stiff? Just wait. Just wait, baby. Oh, just wait till- And like, it's not the fault of the talent here. It's literally Niji's fault. Like, for wanting them to be this way. Like, what's the point? Well, I'm in every like, at this point, it's literally just a PNG moving. Every freaking collab again. Remember that time when I was in every collab? Because I organized every collab? Yeah, good times. It's happening, baby. I'm gonna get back into it. In any case, <clears throat> the sentiment around Nina Kosaka being quote-unquote problematic also spread in places like TikTok. And oh. it gained a lot of traction to say the least. That was until they got deleted, including- I think my favorite VTuber model has to be Limes, to be honest. I love Limes model. Limes model is so good. Yeah. And I wanted to, like, like not collab, but wanted to, like, commission the same artist, but they ain't taking commissions no more. They ain't taking no commissions. Putting the original write-up of the catalog. What did not help was the fact that after this sentiment was starting to spread, she expressed a little bit of grievances over what happened a few years back regarding her being oh. excluded from the group. Twice a week, I would be like, hey, you know, we should maybe talk. We should like get to know each other before, you know, like we yeah. don't really know each other, blah, blah, blah. They kept telling me that they were busy and they couldn't make the call. And then months down the line, I found out that like the three of them would like voice call each other. Kind of took it personally and I... Ah! <laughs> Bro, why? Oh, I hate... I I hate people. I hate people. I hate people. By the way, I'm scared that something like this is happening to me at the moment. I I know it's mostly just my insecurity speaking, but you know, you never 100% know. You never 100% know. And I'm so insecure. <laughs> I'm so insecure about it. I was like, mm. ah, you know, and then I just started doing my own thing. <laughs> they have a lot more things in common than I did with them. And I guess to them, they were like, we don't need to do a voice call. We already voice call. Of course, it is important huh? to note that this apparently happened when they first started. The members of Etheria, especially Millie and Anna, were already friends before, so it made sense that Nina's fitting in process was a little harder for her. It didn't necessarily represent their current or developing relationship from when she talked about this in October of 2022. But there were people who made it absolutely clear that they hated her for this. Oh there was a trend God. among a certain faction of Niji EN fans who did not like Nina. Etheria uh. with a 3 replacing the E. 3 Etheria was their rallying cry what? of sorts. And the amalgamation Why? of all of these plus the fact that she didn't think she was good enough for her content, not good Aww. enough for anything, caused her to be super unsatisfied. Man. See, Nina graduated. But when she announced her graduation, she made a heartfelt note for her fans where she expressed a sort of creative difference that there was a gap between her and what her fellow livers were making and what she wanted to make. She didn't perform up to her own standards. She wanted to pursue her own thing. Many people could only speculate what the statement could mean, but how, oh how, would Niji Sanji be without the mommy figure? Because she was a unique one. 
one of those rare Ara Ara mummies who didn't sexualize themselves. But the mummy that mummied. Rather, she was a Yay. hag who sold her charisma the and mom, her talking mom. skills more than anything. The wholesome, caring mommy, rather than the dick explosion sort of mommy. Although she always had that potential, she just never used it. Not yet, of course. Me, personally, I thought, yeah, she's probably not dead. Going indie or something, most likely. Not the sound. Not the resume sound. I'm getting PTSD. Since Kuro joined Ninja Sanji, fans have long predicted that Nina was going to follow suit. Especially since her graduation letter made it seem like she was not going to quit content creation. And brother V Shoujo didn't even try to hide it. They took advantage of this, in fact, and they came out swinging. Actually, had Matara speak her shit on Twitter and drop. I still don't understand why a cockroach. <laughs> why a cockroach? Talk to her like a nuke. <laughs> <laughs> and people were happy about this. People expected this. Matara Khan's joining of V Shoujo meant to a lot of people, not just VTubers, not just Matara, but the entire industry. Although Kason and Nazuna was the signal to the industry at large they couldn't kill her. that V Shoujo will take people from their competitors, Kuro and Matara were the ones that set it in stone. See, even as Nina Kosaka, she had an interesting place in Etheria as the heart. Watch my video to find out what that is. From the outside looking in, she seemed like she was the emotional core of the group. Albeit the supportive, mature kind, rather than the soft-spoken and emotive one that we're mostly familiar with. Of course, many people may see it differently, but that's personally how I saw it. She was the one who tied people together, she was outgoing. Very social, super sweet, super caring, and it An showed word, it. a lot of people in and outside of Nijisanji I loved need a her even despite life. the vocal minorities whining. But because she was in an agency, there was going to be certain limitations and restrictions Nina had to face. She had to be competitive, she had to answer to someone, and for a person like but... Nina, that might not have been good for her, especially yeah. long term as she states in her graduation letter. Of course, we'll never know what truly happened, the full extent of how Nina was treated in Nijisanji. Really, what we do know is that she's surprised that V Shoujo's management is actively <laughs> helping her out, giving the implication that in Nijisanji, such help was not thanks to the follow. Someone like Nina That's needed crazy, relaxing, man. a not-so-stressful place where she can set her own tempo, reach out and socialize without the restrictions. Her graduation letter was more so a realization that the traditional agency setting was just not for her. I'd even go as far as going against the grain of public sentiment and say that despite the whole surprised by V Shoujo manager thing, Niji Sanji didn't abuse her or anything remotely close to that. She got a lot while being here, connected her to people she otherwise might have never met, possibly hmm. gave her access to money that she otherwise would have never gotten, made her discover what she really wanted, changed in ways we'll never realize, made her the person she was when she joined V Shoujo. And that last bit is crucial, because the person that she became in V Shoujo was an entirely different beast. Matara Khan was in multiple aspects a sort of improvement from Nina Kosaka, performance-wise, appeal-wise, and numbers-wise. It's not a past life-related Nina Kosaka average CCB 1.4k? Madara Khan average CCB 3.8k? Jesus. Video without some number andying. I know you guys like that. Of course, there's all <laughs> sorts of reasons for this improvement. People who were filtered by Nijisanji and deciding to check her out because she's now out of Nijisanji for reasons only they're privy to. She got into the side of the industry with a lot more male demographics that she would have normally been exposed since Niji EN had an overwhelmingly female audience. But I think the biggest reason is vibe. Let me explain. I explained in my V Shoujo She's Redemption so video that the reason V Shoujo She's achieved so a chill. sort of redemption is because their vibes changed. Like, they became an overall happier, more positive place, yeah. and that's why they became much more appreciated. And yeah, Matara yeah, Khan yeah. was one of those VTubers that helped create that sort of environment. Her showcasing her gratefulness to the place and oh this God. overwhelming, contagious aura of her being able to do what she wanted without the corporate shackles stressing her out. The previously unfelt hand of Nijisanji, now very much so, telling her what she can do and what she can collab with. For those that don't know, with my previous job, um, I'll, I kind of, you know, I'll, I'll basically just scrape on the top of it. There was a lot of stuff on my previous job that I just didn't really want to make friends with people that weren't at my job because there was a lot of NDAs in place and there was a lot of things we weren't allowed to discuss and mm -hmm. you kind of didn't really know who to trust, which... Oh my god, imagine that shit, man. Bro. I get it, right? But now that I 
don't really have anything like that in my life and nothing, you know, I'm not afraid to meet somebody and be like, oh yeah, I have a new, a new outfit coming up. Do you want to see sketches? <gasps> but before, it's like, I just, I kind of can't talk about a big part of my work or my life or anything like that. Jesus. So it, it was kind of hard to make friends outside Lichi of Sanji is so the group bad. that I was in. But now so happy I, I don't dying. really have to worry about that. It's that freedom, that nonchalantness of her past life, this very slight, subtle, but feelable shift in her demeanor in some way that is felt in her content and the way she speaks now. It made her a better VTuber somehow. And I'm just not saying this from my own biases or experience. Her numbers are the biggest evidence of this. Yeah. Normally, when an ex-corpo VTuber leaves their previous company and becomes indie or goes somewhere else, their numbers usually drop all across the board. But Matara was one of the VTubers that actually did get bigger, her live viewership more than doubling in size than it ever was when she was known as Nina. Burnout is something I don't think a lot of audiences realize takes a heavier toll on a content creator. A lot of content creators you follow are probably running on fumes, running on mere embers of their creativity. And well, you caught me up like this. And I don't think any content creator will be able to make you understand that toll unless you become a content creator and feel it yourself. Pair that up with a place of unbelonging, being no longer happy with your content, feeling like you don't deserve your audience. VTubers have graduated Ugh. for less. Content creators uh. have quit the internet for less. I look at Matara Khan as my own personal inspiration. I'm no stranger to feeling like the end of my content creating days are nigh or feeling unhappy with the content I make. I know every one of us understands the anxiety of an uncertain future. And it takes one hell of a bad bitch or a magnificent bastard to power through that and live regardless. To still choose to stay and that decision ending up more than paying off. Not all of us can experience the same success and path that Matara Khan experienced. Survivorship bias and all that. Sometimes the gamble doesn't pay off. Oh my off. god, her <laughs> Her booper! Jeff! Khan experienced. Survivorship bias and all Look. that. Sometimes the gamble doesn't <laughs> pay off. Heck, not all of us have formed the connections or acquired the resources to even have something remotely similar as she does. But looking back at stories like hers, of a lot of VTubers that have made it, I can't help but feel a little hope well within me. Maybe we will be fine. Maybe we will come out of the dark, on certain days, better, even. I know there's a lot of VTubers who are currently experiencing this. Those who are uncertain because their golden days are beyond them. Those who are uncertain because they'll never even experience a golden age to begin with. The numbers ultimately don't mean anything. And it shouldn't despite you or me comparing and studying it. You may feel like your golden age are behind you, not earning as much, but I if there's you a are more free, one? have surged like with creativity I never before felt, one. as long as you are content. That's what matters. This is the lesson I get from Atara Khan's story. It's not the abused ex-corpo finally experiencing a good VTuber agency kind of story. And I think it's a healthy lookout that I think a lot of us need to remember. Great video. I really like this. I, don't, I never knew that Mara was uh, Nina before Kids of Golden Age when we're living in the Kids of Golden Age right now. After all, I, I have a debut coming up. Like chat and YouTube, I'll add this into YouTube to you. Um, on my birthday, the 28th of August, I am swapping to a new model. It's gonna be a semi, um, semi chibi. Until I have my new personal full model. Like, for a while, we're gonna be rocking that chibi life. We're gonna be rocking that chibi life for a while, chat. Until I have my new personal proper big model. The 28th? Yeah, I have my birthday on the 28th. We are gonna hold... A true... Uh, we're gonna hold a uh, huge debut. We're gonna hold a subathon. And I'll hope to see you all there.